Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you feeling today? I feel great, and it's a pleasure to be here, girl. Thank I'm you. I'm trying to keep it cute. Yes, you are always. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We're so excited to talk about reparations, style, and soul. So mm -hmm. reparations, style, and soul is a coffee table book, including a selection of essays written by you on topics such as race, relationships, and culture. Love the cover, by the way. Thank you. I designed the dress that she was wearing. Really? Can Ooh. you show us again? Yes. Point, point. Oh yeah, that's Ooh. nice. The red on the red, like, does it? Don't that, that red good. pop, girl? Mm -hmm. You want to know does. why I chose red, honey? Why? Because some reparations have to be paid for in blood. Period. And we're going to get into that. All so, right. How did the title come about? So, reparations, the title, um, Reparations, Style, and Soul came about three years ago, um, and it came to me as I was praying about it because this book is six years in the making. And, you know, I wasn't writing it and styling and putting together the photo shoots for six years, but I was on again, off again, going through different things, but it was always in the back of my mind. And I went through a series of titles, Mad in Black, How to Dress Like You Have a Bad Attitude, the nasty boys, nasty girls, attitude, guys, the fashion. Like, I knew I wanted to incorporate Black culture, but I knew I wanted to incorporate Black uh, history and fashion as well. And reparations I've been studying throughout my career as a journalist, um, but then also throughout my college career as well, throughout my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And it came to me through prayer. I just got serious. I said, God, I want a good title, something that is going to make people think. They're going to see a fashion cover, but say, why is reparations here? What does fashion have to do with that? And I hope to answer that question when they get the book. I love that. So for people that don't know, you have a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's in English. And you also dib and dab in fashion style in Israel, right? So give us yes. a piece of your experience in the fashion industry. Okay, well, I started in 2007 and um, I started working for small newspapers, but then in 2008. Now, I was in college during those years, but writing for the school newspaper was not good enough for me, child, because that's what everybody else was doing. But you know the saying, we have to work twice as hard and be twice as talented, sometimes three times and four times as talented just to get half. So at the time in 2008, there was a small publication. It was small at the time. And it was owned by a political analyst named Ariana Huffington. And that post, that um, publication was called the Huffington Post. They were looking for elect, elect, election, excuse me, correspondence for a new vehicle they started called Off the Bus. And I was selected to be one, and I got the pleasure of covering the 2008 election um, campaign for a young senator out of Illinois named Barack Obama. And it was an opportunity of a lifetime being at the Capitol and being um, just even in Philadelphia which was a major swing city and state as well, um, and covering the debates between Barack Obama and um, Hillary Clinton and the other uh, candidate who had that sex tape out child, and he um, kind of fell from grace. I forget his name. So, um, so tell me, how did it go from how? you being a political writer to you getting into the fashion industry? Where did that shift come so, from? So after the election, I've always been interested in fashion. My fashion upbringing, as I write about in the book, comes from growing up in the church. You know, I didn't come from what you would call a formal fashion background, even though I would call 
going to church every Sunday, Tuesday for Bible study, Wednesday for prayer meeting, Friday for choir rehearsal. Yeah. Grandma had you all. Um, child, I was a PK. My my grandmother was an evangelist. My great grandmother was a pastor. My, my dad, I grew up. Teacher. My dad was a pastor. So when I went to see my daddy. Like you said, Sunday school, we went to church, we spent the whole day at church, the whole night. You know the deal. You know the deal. So I do call it a formal fashion background because I learned how to care for garments. I learned about what it was like to put on your best because you were going to see the Lord and you were going to the house of the Lord. So respect had to be paid, period. Right. But with that being said, that transition happened after the election where the Huffington Post, the editors were so impressed with my writing that they asked me to stay on and they converted my account to a regular account. And I had the liberty to write about whatever I wanted to. And I chose fashion. Okay, cool. So you have this quote that stood out to me in your book that said, there is little freedom in fashion for Black people with the feeling of not belonging to looming overhead. Ironically, proving one's worth in the fashion industry is a rite of passage for Black creatives, often having to reconcile the fact that Black culture is misappropriated and then given a new name. Expand on that. First of all, whoever wrote that, their pen is <laughs> prolific, period. Like, that's hard. That was a bar. Like, that whole excerpt was like, it, when I read it, I'm like, hmm. I'm telling you, like, period. All right, so, because I got excited. Like, normally, it's funny because when I was reading through the book, I was like, God, you are so good because this is some good writing, period. Really? The writing he was speaking is to you. elite. Yeah, that's good. Was, listen, because they won't break my soul, period. I'm telling everybody. <laughs> okay, but no. Um, so yeah, like in fashion, it is an experience that you can't avoid, whether you want to admit it or not. Andre Leon Talley wrote about it at length in his book, Surviving the Chiffon Trenches. Um, like it's something he went through, whether or not Edward Enfield talks about it, it's something he went through. It's something Naomi Campbell went through. It's something Tyra Banks went through. It's something Samira Nazir went through. Adam you know? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. And then there, are so many, coming... there are so many pieces within the fashion industry. It's not just all about the forefront, the models, the execs, the editors, behind the scenes. Like, what about those people who really have to dig hard to get what they deserve? So talk about that. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, honestly, it's it's like a catch-22 because you work so hard to get to that point. You know what I mean? Not everybody wants to be the next Naomi. Some people do want to work behind the scenes, like you're saying. And some people are happy, not even content, but excited to be that executive and that you know, buyer and merchandiser, people who you'll never hear about, but who make a profound, profound impact, oftentimes bigger than the names that we know of today. But at the end of the day, they still encounter that issue because when you work that hard, you're often the only person in the room. In Reparation Style and Soul, I speak to that experience that experience that I had in academia, but also that experience that I had working on the merchandising side during market week as well, which a lot of people don't know even what that is. And I speak about how you handle that and come to grips with that and what that actually means. And my way of handling it is the knowledge of self, which has to do with our history, which has often been hidden from us which is why the reparations piece is so important. I'm a firm believer in, and this will be the last thing I say to your question, obviously, is that you don't need to beg for a seat for to, at a table that you built and that your ancestors built. But you see, the power is not in that. The power is in the knowledge and understanding of the fact that that's where you come from. Yeah, love that. I love that. 
So throughout the book, which people, when they get it, they'll obviously see this, but there are love letters to your family and ancestors throughout. Describe your emotional connection when writing about them. So for me, it's become very important in everything that I do to honor my ancestors because they are the reason why we are all here. They crawled so that we could walk. So that includes someone like an Andre Leon Sally, who has become an ancestor. He crawled so that Edward Amyful could walk. So to me, anything that we, when I'm writing fashion, I'm honoring him. When I'm mentoring a young Black talent in fashion, I'm honoring him. I'm honoring Willie Smith. I'm honoring... Uh, Scott Berry. I'm honoring all of the unsung or unsown Black uh, figures in fashion who didn't get their just due. And because they didn't, I have to. So that's why, to me, it's so important. But to your question, I believe you're talking about my relatives. And I speak about and write about my grandmother at length. She is my greatest... Um, muse. I write about her for the best reasons, also for the not so good reasons. My grandmother and I, we had a very um, complicated relationship, but she raised me. And there are certain attributes and things that I've learned from her, um, including things in fashion that I will never take for granted that I'm grateful for on such a large scale. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. So Every opportunity I get, I take to honor her as well through my art and through the work that I present. And that's good. And that shows your growth too, because like you said, with any relationship, it can get complicated. But the fact that you still are able to speak to the fact that she had a lot to do with the person you are today, that's good. Absolutely. For the people who are interested in the book, where can they purchase from? And is there anything else that you wanted us to know about reparations, Style and Soul? So, um, most importantly, the thing that I want everybody to know is that Reparation Style and Soul is available everywhere books are sold. We have international distribution. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Period. All right. Don't just think. Don't just think that this is a book that you can get down to the Amazon. Now, we wow. like Amazon every now and then, but you they can, can also to, get this they book. They can go to Barnes and Noble. You, honey, you can go to Barnes and Noble. You can go to Walmart, where there's always low prices. Always. <laughs> you can go to Books a Million. You can go to several bookstores. Guys, honey, you can go to thriftbooks.com. You can go so to eBay. To you can go to Hair.com. You can go everywhere, honey. We everywhere. We in a building. What's up? Show your Don't play with me. We everywhere. Show your books so they'll know what to look for. A beautiful red book, Reparation, Style and Soul, Sold on Amazon and everywhere in store where books can be found. Okay. Yes, and please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm still on Twitter, but I don't know for how long, honey, because I'm verified on Twitter, but I'm not paying the $8, okay? Elon, 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 Elon's people. Elon, I'm not paying the eight. <laughs> I'm not paying the eight, Elon. Okay, I might need that eight for an Instagram ad for my book, honey. I can't, I don't know if I could pay the eight. We not all billionaires like you, Eli. But if y'all want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, y'all can do so at James R. Sanders, spelled S-A-N as in Nancy or Negro, D-E-R-S, all right? All one word. And please come find me if you ever need advice about fashion people. I am out there, y'all. I love talking to everybody. I'm here for everybody. And you're located and in New York. And don't start now, won't be none. Located in New York. Yes, I'm located in New York. You already know what it is. I'm not giving you my address, man, people, because I know some of y'all is crazy. I know some of y'all is crazy. Y'all, you know, they can't, you know... I don't want you to hit the. Thank you. I'll be like Three's Company. Come and knock on my door. Right. I'll be waiting for you. But yeah, girl, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but no, for real, thank you. Um, reparations, I believe, is a great book. That's a great accomplishment, too, that you were able to write a book. Thank you. And include, you know, your family members, include what's from your heart. So congratulations. And definitely. Oh, one more thing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I also want y'all to know. It is a coffee table book, so it features over 150 pages of high fashion images. Um, you know, we talk a lot about fashion. It has the essays in it, of course, but I want y'all all to know that I uh, curated some of the most amazing Black photographers in the world some and of some of the out. most beautiful. Huh? Give some of the photographers a shout out. Oh, yeah, let's do that. All right, so shout outs to Dylan McDonald, shout outs to um, Marquita Davis, Joelle Finnegan, Mark Gaskins, William, William Harper, Pierre Lewis, Love Bond, Drake Masters, and Sharonda C. Wright. Thank you all so much. And also, uh, it's all Black photographers who shot all Black models. Um, so the book is unapologetically black. The images you'll see are from my eyes, all creative directed and styled by me. Um, I'm so yeah, grateful you, for the took opportunity. Three years, three years to curate. Right? It took several. It took me several years to curate. Um, some of the shoots have already been published in magazines, and they've been widely received. They've gotten some amazing. Uh, publicity and, uh, you know, notoriety. Some of the models you will recognize. One of the models is a Valentino girl, Brittany Tyra, shout out to her. And so, oh, and one of the models is a male model who was a season 18 finalist on ABC's The Bachelorette. Shout out to Olumide, Onaji Day, which in Nigerian means a Yorobo means our hero has come so thank you for letting me say that last piece taylor i know you were trying to wrap up i apologize queen, no, you're fine. but thank you Got it. this is your ending day. <laughs> but that is the wrap um thank you you are sheen's very own you contribute to sheen pretty often yeah we always are welcome to sharing uh beautiful um black stories and again congratulations Thank you so much, and thank you, Sheen, for having me.